very very difficult situation when the UGC is failing to assist. Please caution your uh, your commission. Intermediate and regular classes, then that. Then your UGC should be closed. If this is the stand of the of, of your of, of the UGC, that this should be left to the recruiting agencies and the state government departments. The issue in the present case is whether a candidate who has completed his graduation by way of an entrance test conducted after the completion of bachelor preparatory program instead of a formal 10 plus 2 education shall be eligible for participating in selection processes where the graduation is the basic qualification albeit the candidate concerned does not have a formal plus 2 degree now my lord as i could figure out there are two basic issues the firstly is whether the degree of graduation is recognized and secondly if it is recognized whether the recruitment bodies have any jurisdiction or authority do not consider that degree as eligible in such recruitments. Now, in so far as the first question is concerned, the regulation of 1985 with respect to open school, which my Lord will find. Where is that? My Lord, in the compilation, it is at page number 68 uh, there is one index which I, which i may provide because the compilation does not have any index at page 68 yes yes ugc regulations 1985 regarding the minimum standards of instructions for the grant of first degree through non-formal distance education. The relevant provision is Regulation 2. No student shall be eligible for admission to the first degree course through non-formal distance education unless he has been successfully, he has successfully completed 12 years schooling through an examination conducted by a board university. In case there is no previous academic record, he shall be eligible for admission if he has passed an entrance test conducted by the university, provided that he is not below the age of 21 years on July 1 of the year of admission. Now, this my lord prescribes that... This is, this is exception to the first condition. Second sentence is an exception to the first condition. My lord. Second is, no student shall be eligible for the award of the first degree unless he has successfully completed a three years course, which is that even if formal schooling is not there, even then he can be awarded, he can be admitted to graduation, but graduation degree will be awarded only after a three year graduation course has been completed. This degree may be called BA, BSc, BCom, General Honours Special Degree, as the case may be. And then it is stated, provided that no student shall be eligible to seek admission to the master's course in these faculties who has not successfully pursued the first degree course of three years duration, which is that for master's course, three years course is mandatory. mandatory. But there is a further exception, provided further that as a transitory measure where the universities are unable to change over to a three year degree course, they may award a BA, BSc, BCom pass degree on successful completion of two years course, but that no student of this stream shall be eligible for admission to master's course unless he has undergone a further one year bridge course and passed the same. The three year degree course after 10 plus 2 stage should in no case be termed as BA, BSc, BCom pass degree, which is my lord as I could understand. The BA, BSc, BCom pass degree is a degree which is awarded after two years graduation and then if the candidate undergoes a further one year bridge course, he can be admitted to the master's degree. And the regular three years course was prescribed in uh, regulation 2.1. Now, as per this regulation, even if a candidate does not have formal 10 plus 2 education, he could still be admitted to graduation and he could still be awarded a valid graduation degree. Now, the writ petitioner in the present case has also 
uh, not cleared the 10 plus 2 formal education and he has passed the entrance examination conducted by the IGNU. After this 1985, this my lord was issued in exercise of powers conferred by clause F of subsection 1 of section 26 of the UGC Act. Now this subsection gives clause the F of subsection 1 of section 26 of the UGC Act. This my lord section 26 clause 1 put. There were two sets of writ petitioners in this case. One, those who did not complete graduation but had, had completed post-graduation. And two, those who had not completed intermediate but had completed graduation. Now, while allowing the set of the writ petition filed by the second set of candidates who had not completed uh, plus two but had completed graduation, the discussion is in paragraph 27 to 35 at page 64. Then comes the last category, with the persons who obtained degree through non-formal distance education mode without passing plus two examination, but they were admitted to the degree course after they passed the entrance examination conducted by the respective universities. The following petitioners comes under this category. Now paragraph 29, at this juncture, it is relevant to again reproduce the relevant portion of the clause 1 of regulation 2 of 1985 UGC regulations as here under. Then my lord, it was 2-1 was quoted, para 30 states, in view of clause 1 of regulation 2 of 1985 UGC regulations, the relevant portion of which is highlighted above, I am of the view that these petitioners are entitled to be selected for the group 2 post and they should also be given appointment. At this juncture, it is also relevant to note that this court passed an entry order of status quo and so and so in respect of 35 vacancies lying as on date in MP number so and so. I am not in agreement with the submission made by the learned additional advocate general for the, for the government and the learned senior counsel for the TNPSC that as per GO M number 107, the degree awarded in the non-formal distance education mode to the candidates who passed plus two examination alone shall be considered as a valid one. I am of the considered view that the validity of a degree shall not be tested on the anvil of the government order, but the same shall be tested on the relevant UGC regulations. The relevant regulation framed under section 26 of the University Grants Commission Act 1956 is 1985 UGC regulations and clause 1 of regulation 2 of 1985 UGC regulation makes it clear that the open universities could admit students to the degree course in the non-formal distance education mode even if they did not pass plus 2 examination but those students should have passed the entrance test for admission to the degree course. The aforesaid clause in regulation 2 shall be read into GOM number 107 PN AR department dated so and so. Therefore, I shall have no hesitation to reject the submission of the learned additional advocate general and the learned senior counsel for the TNPSC. So if the degree is recognized, then the respective state governments or any government or the public service commissions or any recruitment body have no authority to declare the candidates ineligible. Now whether the degree is recognized or not, my Lord, these are the sets of regulations in place as uh, in, my, in my humble right. submission, 85 regulation until the 2017 it should be recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Yes, so who is for the uh, IGNU? Someone is there, for IGNU is a party. Indira Gandhi National Open University is a party. Someone is representing. Yes, UGC. My Lord, we have got instructions, my Lord. In a week or so, my Lord, we will be filing. It has gone there for affidavit. It will be coming, my Lord. On next Wednesday, I will be able to assist. We have got the instruction, my Lord, that UGC at its own is not distinguishing whether it is by Indira Gandhi Open University or regular course, whether intermediate or not intermediate, they are not distinguishing, but they, it has been left open for the recruiting agencies 
who deem it expedient that the person for that particular post should have intermediate and regular classes then that then your be. ugc should be closed if this is the stand of the of of your of, of the ugc that this should be left to the recruiting agencies and the state government departments to decide which degree is recognized or not no, then what for the ugc is there well, no, ugc is recognizing they are making no distinction they are they are saying they are, they have granted permission therefore this in indira gandhi open university is there therefore have you have you uh, noticed the submissions which which have been advanced the the submission is that from 1985 to 2017 there may not be any difficulty if a candidate does not have 10 plus 2 is to uh, to certificate with him but has b a course b b a degree b a uh, awarded by the igno uh, indira gandhi national open university but after 2017 the things have changed there is some difference between 1985 regulation and 2017 regulation there must be some reason why the UGC has uh, met this 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 distinction, and if there is no reason, then uh, uh, it's very difficult to comment upon the conduct of the UGC. If they are not sure why the distinction was uh, made uh, from 1985 uh, in 2017, then the matter is different, and the court will see what the UGC is doing. It will be there. It is, it is very very difficult situation when the UGC is. failing to assist please caution your uh, your commission we are we are getting no assistant at all yes